Okay, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I, I'm, I'm going to try to make this short because I'm really nervous right now. I feel like a chihuahua because when chihuahuas get like nervous and scared, they start like shaking and peeing. I, I went to the bathroom before I got up here. Don't worry about that. I'm shaking it. I'm nervous. Okay, so the talk this week. The talk this week is about finding your identity in Christ and the resurrection. And um, it just kind of, something that I thought, like, y'all might relate to. The other day I was riding in the car. Did any of y'all like Kenny Chesney? Anyone? Good. Okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Well, the other day I was riding in the car. I, I don't know what I was doing. But um, The Good Stuff by Kenny Chesney came on. And this song is just kind of talking about how... Um, I don't. I guess Kenny Chesney and like his wife or something got into an argument, <laughs> and he decided to like drive down the road to like where I guess like I guess like where bars and restaurants are in this area, and he pulls in. And is like, hey, give me the good stuff, and the the person there is like, what are you talking about? We don't have that here. And Kenny Chesney, I guess, is just like, what? And then um, the guy is just kind of like. He starts naming off all these things that are better than like that are better than like alcohol and stuff. And um, I guess that's where we'll start. I don't know where to go from here, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> and I know some I know some of y'all have probably been in that same position. Like y'all are probably like, oh, I want you know, like I want to follow Christ, but I'm already in this too deep. If you're a girl, you're probably like, oh my gosh, I just love my boyfriend so much. <laughs> Y'all, some of y'all are probably like, I'm in too deep. Like, I want to follow Christ, but I've already, I've already found my identity in something that is sinful. And do y'all, do you want to know what the Bible says about, says about that? Yeah. It comes from um, Titus three, and it's three through seven. It's kind of, it's kind of. Oh, it's okay. I got, I, I I'll, I'll try to do this. Um, <laughs> And it said, it says, at one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. But then it goes on to say that um, Jesus saved us through washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And what that is just saying is that by Christ, like we're like we're born new. I mean, I think that that's pretty cool. And then. Um, Oh gosh, I'm so scattered brain. I'm sorry, y'all. But um, this, this just got. But then, um, you know, like God, He sent His only Son down to Earth without knowing whether or not that we would accept Him. And there is, like, there is no greater love than that. And it even says that in Romans 5:8 it says, "But God shows His love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us." Like, that just blows my mind every time I read this. And um, I know when I, like, when I guess I was still, like, a fan of Christ, like, I like to read Romans. Um, it just said, it, it, like, revealed so much to me. You know, like, when, it, you know, like, all of us do struggle, but you should not let that struggle become your identity. There are so many other things that um, you can find your identity in. Like this says, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character. And character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. And that's also from Romans 5. And um, I don't know, I guess just through, through your suffering, like no matter what it is, you can just know that your hope should be found in Christ. Like... Like, there is absolutely nothing that you can do that will make God stop loving you. And um, we sang it tonight. Y'all know the song that we sang earlier, How He Loves Us, by the David Crowder brand, band. I'm sorry. Um, it says, like one of the lyrics in the song says, If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. And I know that can be, that can be hard for some of y'all to understand. And basically what it's saying is that God's forgiveness of our sins, like it's never ending. And like I was saying earlier, there's absolutely nothing that you can do that can make God love you any less than he already does. And um, I don't know, like, 
I know that I used to struggle a lot with stuff like this. You know, like how could, like there's so many, like there's so many people out there. And how could God just love all of us? But you know, even as you, y'all are just sitting here in this room, like you are incapable of going unnoticed by God. Like, I, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm so sorry. I have no idea what I'm doing right now, <laughs> to be completely honest. But, um, thank you. <laughs> but, um, but, um, just know that, you know, God took, took away all of our sins by sending Jesus down to die for us. Like, it even says in Corinthians, it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That can be kind of hard to understand. But basically what it's saying is that our sins were taken away so that we could be the people that God intended us to be from the beginning. And um, I know sometimes a lot of us can feel kind of, a lot of us can feel hopeless sometimes. And after Jesus died, like a lot of his disciples probably felt that way too. Like they like Jesus died and they put him in the tomb. But then hope was hope was not lost because you know what happened after that. Three days later, Jesus came out of the, Jesus was resurrected, and you know a lot of like the disciples felt hopeless, but it, but that was not over. That was not the end, and it's not the end for you either. Like while you're sitting there thinking, oh, I can't find my identity in Christ because I've already done this or I've already done that. It's not the end of your story just because you've done bad things before. It wasn't the end of the story. It wasn't the end when Jesus died on the cross for us. You know, this is, it's just not the end of your story, and it wasn't when Jesus died on the cross. And that's, like, your story doesn't have to end now. Like, you can, you can become a follower. Like, you don't have, you know, there's so many other things besides all those bad things. And you can't, you can be pure again. And this, this isn't the end of your story. I guess that's all I have to say. I'm sorry that this is all.